perspectives, different views, one voice. Welcome to the LDN Perspective Podcast. My name is Kojo. Chris. And we continue part two of xenophobia attacks in South Africa with our two special guests, Mo and Dale. We pick up the conversation by comparing how some migrants might have felt during Brexit to how the indigenous people in South Africa might feel towards um, migrants in South Africa. Just before you come in, I just, go on, sorry, I found mm-hmm. enough, enough chance. <laughs> but, but it's just, you know, you mentioned Brexit and then you mentioned the immigrants now saying, because it's the immigrants, we had to, we had that ladder in order for a lot of us, second generation, where we yeah, 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 yeah. in order for us to have the foothold that we have in this country yeah. and it was very interesting that we had the same we had the same immigrants now talking about other immigrants coming yeah, into yeah, the country yeah, yeah. and how that is fit. but the, the reason why I always associate this to class is because when you look at the immigrants that were coming in so immigrants come some people are very skilled or specialists in a specific role you could have doctors nurses whatever that role is or and then or, of course it's expats <laughs> it's not migrants it's expats yeah? let me get it right thanks for correcting yes. me <laughs> expats yeah and then you will you will have a lot of people coming in and they'll pick up any job mm. that is going right the generation before the migrants that came in here they know the type of jobs that they're working. Some of them are doing cleaning. It could be bar job, mm. whatever these jobs are. Mm. They know they're going to be the hardest hit because when it comes to this now, before we'll give you this job because you're the lowest in the pack. Now we have another batch of people coming that look like us. Now we don't actually have to give you these jobs. We could give it to them. Mm. And they're prepared to work as well, as mm. hard as you are mm. because they come under the whole thing of migrants where you're mm. leaving one pasture for a newer mm. or better pasture. So what I was saying regarding that point is that there are nuances around that conversation mm. as to why a former migrant or someone that was a migrant, initially a migrant in this country, might say that I don't want these people to come into my country mm. or, or so-called country because they're feeling like they're going to be heavily impacted when these people come in because they'll be fighting for the same jobs they and roles be, yeah. type of thing. But yeah, so go on. I mean... Just to bring it back to one of the things we were talking about in terms of obviously the reason for this attack. I think at the moment the 2019 version of xenophobia in South Africa is still unraveling. So I think it would be interesting to see obviously the narratives that come up, hopefully once um, law and order and common sense have actually come back into place. And I think that's actually quite... <laughs> you say yeah. common sense, I wonder if that it's common. I mean, I mean, again, well, that is a very good point actually because common sense sometimes is something that can be hard to actually derive really. Well, well, I think I, in politics, you might know the common sense, but well, it might not be to your agenda, so you might not support yeah, exactly. politics. But well, if you look at the 2018 xenophobic attacks in South Africa and how it actually unraveled, I think looking at it from the point of the purple potato, people that were actually carrying out these xenophobic attacks, I think one of the things that came out from that was there was an element of victimization from their side. Yes. So to yes. them, they yes. felt that, you know, like, like you said, there was an incident that triggered it. However, there were underlying issues there. Mm-hmm. And I think what they felt, and I think this is, again, it's about perception and how you're seeing things from your point of view. One thing they felt was, they felt that, and I think, so it happened in 2008, and I think it had been, you could trace it back almost seven years. It was almost like a seven years sort of attack on their part. And I think, therefore, victimizing your own country, mm-hmm. again, perception, again, we could argue that point, you know, are you victimized, blah, 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 but that's the perception that you need to wear respect that if you don't agree with but that. But that perception has a history. Has it, absolutely. So they felt victimized in their own country. And I think one of the things they started labeling, again, was, you know, people saying stories about how some of the local indigenous women were raped by immigrants and by mm. foreigners. Mm. Um, they talked about how there were attempted murders and fight, mm. and there were stabbing, there were armed robberies. And they thought that actually all this had been happening in the last seven years in our country these crimes were being committed by immigrants, and I think we just had enough. Mm. You know, we said, you know what, enough's enough. Enough is enough. And yeah. that's their point of view. That's mm. the perception. Mm. When I was coming here, you know, I had a, I was discussing this with my friend on the train, and she, she said something that was quite interesting. She said, usually, when you have people, immigrants that come from other countries and come into a new country, and obviously they start owning businesses and things like that, you know, one of the ways you can try to sort of ingratiate yourself with the local indigenous com- um, population is is almost like sort of almost like um, being part of them like mm-hmm. obviously adapt to the culture 
And also, you're looking embrace at embracing, but also, how do you help make the um, local community better? So, for example, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's happening in South, South Africa, so I don't know if it's happening at all, but for, I'll, I'll give an example of Germany, like um, like you said. In Germany, when the Jews came to Germany and they were only big businesses, who were they employed in the highest position? They were the Jews. The local Germans were not being given a good job. In some of the businesses in South Africa that were owned by the immigrants, what they do is, rather than employ the South Africans sometimes to high position power, they would get immigrants from their country to come in. and take those jobs. Yeah. So the South Africans are feeling that actually, mm -hmm. you will enjoy the fruit of our labor, mm -hmm. of you enjoy the prosperity of our country, but you're not yeah. giving back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. how do you expect us to so actually point. feel? Yeah. And, I think, and again, again, I'm not supporting xenophobia, let me make that quite clear. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 However, it's always good to look at both sides of the coin. No, it's always yeah. happening in my... I mean, in Nigeria, for That's example, what with what's happening in Nigeria, again, we could go back to the 1970s in Nigeria, and of course, you will know this very well, when the Guardians came to Nigeria, and they were actually working in Nigeria a lot. Actually, that, that was my next point. I was going to touch on... Um, no, no, go on. Okay. On exactly what you were saying in that sense. Um, I feel that it's a government letting down the people. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so my example is the Angola government. Okay. Mm. So how they try to support their people is um, you can't uh, set up a business in Angola unless it's 50% owned by an Angolan citizen. Mm -hmm. um, so what does that do? That encourages any foreign investment, they have to get the support of the local people mm -hmm. to um, develop businesses and work together and things like that. And same as even them trying to get citizenships, it's a lot more difficult. Um, everything is kind of catered in terms of supporting the residents of the current country. Absolutely. And when you have things like 40% unemployment, yeah. like, those hard. are crazy That's, that's, that's criminal. It's criminal. Like, it's criminal. That is wild. Mm. No, no, it's, it's inevitable there's going to be some yeah. kind of unrest, yeah. for whatever reason. Mm. All <laughs> um, it takes is for someone to turn up. Yeah. <laughs> <Just> walk back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I just feel, yes, um, there are many reasons for um, why the Zimbabwe started, but I do feel that the government has a very huge responsibility hmm. in why it has continued since 2008. Just to latch to your point more, I think sometimes this attack, as Chris said, I think it's a way, and I think it, when you, I mean, it's, it's very hard, and I think it's a dark place to try to dive into the mind of a politician. I would never advise anyone to actually do that. But sometimes when you look at the reason for this narrative, in a way, it's a way for the government to almost hide their... Of course, 100%. Yeah. That's, that's, what what that's what it's all about. about. But in because, South yeah. Africa, definitely. <laughs> that's, that's, what what that's, that's exactly that's what's happening. Happening. That's that's happening. happening. And I think sometimes <laughs> that usually caters, unfortunately, to the less educated of course, in society. Yeah. They're the ones that perpetrated this crime. But then imagine what we said, how that's 5%. Of a, of, of a population cripple the health care system. Yeah, <laughs> this is the crime. So, no, so a lot of the stuff that you said regarding yeah. their people um, being very unhappy, and I think so. There are, there are some controversial conversations here when you talk about the Nigerian mm -hmm. man, and I guess just going into the Nigerian and the migrant, because it was almost felt from some of the other conversations that were being had is that they do not actually respect the culture. Yeah. They come in, I'm the big boss man. I come in here, um, I'm authoritarian, I bring my own culture and I'll impose that on you. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the conversation. I'm not sure how true that is, yeah. but from what is being said, um, it's part of the conversation. Um, what I would like to move this on to um, quickly, we'll talk about the whole Ghana must go conversation. Because yeah. it is quite similar and history kind of repeats itself. But then I guess the Ghana must go, when we touch on that, I'm not sure if there was any killing in that. I know Ghanaians were driven out of Nigeria at certain points due to a lot of these things that are, is happening in South Africa. Um, but I'm not sure if there was there any. So is it is, well, it is it the same? Can it be compared to be the same? Yes, type of thing? yeah, yes, it can to an extent. I mean, again, this is the curse of reading too much. So I actually did a little bit to that. That that old nineteen. It happened in nineteen seventies in Nigeria. And again, the the whole point of the Ghanaian. Um, some migrants coming through, legal migrants, by the way, coming through to Nigeria was at the time in Nigeria there was economic prosperity. There were jobs, there were opportunities for people to actually grow and to become something by you know, obviously flourishing within the society. Then obviously due to 
different reasons, corruption, as it is with Nigeria, mm -hmm. and everything happened with the government, there became economic difficulties within the country. And at the point, it was again, it was a government narrative that was used to drive away or to move or to shift the lens of incompetence on their part to, yeah. of, to the unfortunate people who've actually come to make a better life for themselves. No one leaves a country, to another country, to come and, like people, as you said earlier, the common search of greener pastures, really. And I think at the point, the narrative from the Nigerian government to the Nigerian people, to the less educated of the Nigerian people, was that the jobs that are meant for you, that we have created for you, to enable you to flourish, to feed your kids, to take you to that next level of the Nigerian dream, are being taken by the Ghanaian immigrants. So the only way for you to get that prosperity is to tell them to go back to their country. And there was a massive wave of that. And I think, mm -hmm. unfortunately, by doing that too, in a way, it crippled the economy even further mm -hmm. because you had skilled workers, a lot of the teachers, a lot of the educators in Nigeria at that time were Ghanaians. And all that knowledge, that skill left the country. And actually, it didn't make the country better. In fact, it deskilled it. But also, these things, I think we talk about the social political um, effects on, 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 on the country and national board. You need to look at the person, it has a lasting effect on people. Mm. And then it passes on to generations. And this is what actually sometimes leads to resentment of a certain group of people against another group of people. You, you could argue that the same thing happened in Uganda when Idi Amin drove away the aliens mm -hmm. from, um, from U Uganda away from the country. But remember, although they looked different, they were still Ugandans because a lot of them were born there. So again, there were, no one was killed in the Nigerian incident or the Nigerian wave of, the, of xenophobia in the 70s. Actually, go back to your point. It was never called xenophobia in the 70s. Never. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. It was never called xenophobia. It's, 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 it's not a history of history. Yeah, history of history. But again, they never but, labeled it. But is it because they, they, they coined... Exactly. But, then, yeah. but then is it because they coined these terms at a latter day? No, I think... Because these terms are always being coined as... All the time, because this Afrophobia, Afro whatever, I heard it from... Do you know what I mean? Because it actually... Sorry, I'll let you come in. Because sometimes when you just say the term, everyone just gets it. Rather exactly. than you having to explain exactly, exactly what I, you mean by it. So yeah. I do understand terminology and rhetorics, and I do definitely believe in it. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. But sometimes it explains a problem without you having to actually describe all the different factors so around So you said everything. A problem. You're calling a problem and you're associating it to one set of people. So, for example, that's the problem. For example, yeah. in the seventies in America, you know, Watergate. Now, you hear anything that is negative, they say gate. Yeah. You know, Spygate, Scamgate. It has a connotation of some sort of negativity. And yeah. once you put that, you're right. A legacy. Yeah, a legacy. That's what a legacy. And you, you take a problem and you associate it to one group of people. When you say xenophobia. If you say to me xenophobia right now, I don't think about black. I think about South Africa. It's true. It's true. I don't yeah, think yeah. about black. I think about South Africa. That's, that's, the that's, that's, that's my problem. Yeah. That's my problem. So, so, so it's now it's a South African okay. issue. So moving on in this conversation. Oh, look, I, I did want to ask one thing. Go. How do you feel about celebrities tackling the xenophobia? So I read about Tiwa Savage yeah. cancelling a concert date in yeah. South Africa yeah. because of what was happening yeah. to Nigerian people. Yeah. Do you feel that is a correct way to react to something in her position? So, so it's good that you mentioned that because with my research, I found out that y, YC, yeah. YC, he was having conversations with, um, AKA. Uh, with AKA, the yeah. South African artist, regarding some comments that he yeah. made when Nigeria won the against South Africa, against South Africa in the um, um, African Cup of Nations, right? And then Burner Boy joined the conversation, yeah. and Burner Boy said, "This is the reason why he doesn't do any concerts in South Africa." I think he mentioned the year, but I don't remember the year that he quoted. So I feel like, in regards to your point, I feel like for every one of us, whether we're celebrities or in normal lives, a lot of the times you need to take a stance, and a lot of the times when you take a stance, it makes a ripple effect. It makes it makes some sort of, and I'll get back, it makes some sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, you have to take a stance, as you say. Mm -hmm. So in regards to, there's a consequence to it, yeah. right? And, and, and I feel like these artists, especially Nigerian artists, and when we look at the Afrobeat scene, they are the ones that are carrying the Afrobeat scene. I must also say 
Nigeria or whatever coin where they want to come up with it, right? So of course they have that power now. And 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 that Afrobeat scene is not just in Africa, it's worldwide. So if they were to say that they're not performing in South Africa because they feel like something needs to be done about the current state of migrants in um, South Africa, then it does add to the political unrest for, for the actual governing body of South Africa. Yeah. yeah. Because what you need to understand, a lot of these things, you're bringing money into the country, right? Because yeah. when they go and perform, there's people going, the venue gets money, mm-hmm. you might have security people. So, so the people that are in the country will actually get some jobs as well. So when you are doing that, you're kind of crippling them. It's almost like the sanctions that the Western world put on Africa when yeah. Africa is not towing the line. Mm-hmm. That is to make you learn your lesson type of thing, right? So I, I feel like, yeah, so to your question, I feel like that, that they, they need to be more artists making that stance. Yes, but, but, but see, I disagree with the stance. I disagree with that too. Same I way. think it's terrible. I think it's terrible too. Because again, my question is this. Before you make any comments, and I would, I would <laughs> before you make any comments, before you say anything or stuff like this, I would I always ask people to take a step back and think about this. Mm. What value is your comment going to make to the situation? Yeah. yeah. Is it going to bring positive energy to actually try to yeah. find a resolution? Is it going to incite it? And usually what you saw right there with what Timo Savage was your total or your perfect example of what you call tribalism. She's taking a position. I get it, she's Nigerian. I get it, she wants to go Nigerian. But what she's done, actually, has it helped the situation? Okay. It hasn't helped the situation from, from one point. Yes, it might cause some some economics of um, deficiency to the country, but not for how much money she actually bring it in. No, it's, 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 no it's, but then that's the thing. When you look at a singular person, you, when you're a single person making a they, movement, you don't have much ground or much, much, yeah, much clout yeah. until it's a uniform movement. That's why you need that uniform movement. Because that single person of Tiwa Savage, of course she's not bringing in that much money. But the whole Afro BC, now that's what I keep on saying, and where if they all made that collective thing to say, you know what, this issue is against our own people, yeah. and I'm not just talking about Nigeria, I'm just talking about Afro beats uh, uh, it's in general. And we're not going to be performing there because this country, you need to do something about this. Then it's not just that singular movement any longer. But then it becomes more of a... But then it's not collective because you've got people like MI defending, people like AKA. You are, you know, there's quite a lot of division there. So, so to me, I think a better approach would have been to have some sort of collective, like I said, some sort of, have some sort of collective bargain. It's actually we want to speak to... You know the government is trying to address the issue because our people are suffering. And again, ultimately, you know we're all Africans. You know we have to try to find a way to resolve this issue. I think you putting out the concept does not actually help. Well, what you're doing is you're taking a stance, which I understand. You're taking a stance to show support to your people. But the question is, what is the, you know, what message does that send? You know that that hasn't actually resolved anything in the country. Do you want to come in before I come in? Yeah, so the reason why I disagree with it is I feel that what is that aim? Is that aim to bring awareness mm. or is it to. Because when you. But who, who defines the aim? As in the person that's doing it. Okay. So, so you don't know what her intentions are. Oh, yeah. You're questioning what her intentions are. Yeah, what is her intentions? Yeah. And in, 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 in questioning her intentions, my thing is, is that when you're not performing somewhere, it's like boycotting, right? Mm. And the main objective of most boycotting is to cripple some kind of financial system mm. or some income or awareness on the other mm. side. Mm. So by her crippling the South African economy or the people's entertainment industry, um, industry mm. it's doing it as if the indus- entertainment industry is somehow affecting or supporting xenophobia in that sense, which I disagree with. And I think I feel she should have a more unified stance as opposed to a more segregational stance of taking herself out of the picture yeah. as opposed to going, you know what, let me do a concert in mm. South Africa that draws awareness to xenophobia and everybody comes together and raises money to support this community or something, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, this, yeah. this, that. I think that so, is a much more better approach I, I than saying I don't that. want to go think, there and perform I think, I think, because these people are attacking my people yeah. and so, it's not good. <laughs> I totally agree. I understand what you're I saying. It's fueling I, I anger. agree to a certain extent, <laughs> right? And sometimes it's the Malcolm X in me that makes me come out with these comments, right? Because <laughs> for me, I just look at this. Yeah, you could call it tribalism. You could call it traditionalist or whatever way that we want to call it, right? But I compare this to slavery. 
for me myself, if I was an entertainer, there was no way I was going to be entertaining the so-called people that were enslaving my people. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. I will not do that. Mm. Because for me, you're doing something that I totally disagree with. But yeah, I'm going to come here and sing to you like I'm some I'm so I'm some sort of bloody well, come on, I'm losing my thing here. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, no, 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 no. So 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 a lot uh, no, it's a different no, I don't I don't necessarily think it's a different narrative. Different, for me personally. Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, okay, so let me just make my yeah. let me just make my point. Whether it's racial, people no, are dying. Wait, 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 let me say here. People are dying here. Right? So whether you're saying slavery, you can't compare it. I'm not comparing it to slavery. What I'm trying to say here is that for me to be serving the so-called people that are oppressing my people, it makes no sense to me in this sense of the conversation. So me as an artist, and I know that they go in there killing Ghanaian people, and I'm going to come to the country. Remember, I have a status. These things don't affect me. There are real people there that are dying. So yeah, I could make that stance. And you could say, oh, that's a little drop in the ocean. But as I keep on saying, and the reason why a lot of the movements that we try to make, it never works. Because everyone wants to sit down and have a conversation. But those conversations that the people that are in power are not listening. Yeah? And, and the question I was going to ask was the Nigerian reaction to this and the African Union reaction to this. Because for me, it's very interesting how they respond to these attacks that are going on. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that if we talk about the artist and it's just making a little drop in the ocean, but if all the artists come together, there is, a, like there, 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 is, there, is, there is a collective bargaining. There is a position to be held. There is a conversation to be had. Because a lot of the times, when, once that stance are, are made, the people within the country actually will start mobilizing these conversations and having these conversations. And that's what you need to happen. It needs to be organic. Yeah. It needs to come from the people as well to understand that. So I fully understand raising awareness by actually going there and having this concert and then saying, oh, maybe you can have a mic and talk about why is these things happening? Why do people feel like that? Mm -hmm. To start that. But I feel like for me personally, I will have to take that stance, innit? Because people are dying. So I'll have to take that stance. But anyway, so just going off. If anyone wants to add to that, please add before I move on with this. Do you want to? Because I was just going to talk about the Nigerian response to this. Because the Nigerian president... Um, came out, not necessarily a statement, but what I read, he said he was quite alarmed about the issues. No. The, yeah, he was quite alarmed about the issues that were going on in South Africa. What do you guys feel like the Nigerian response should be? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I guess this is not necessarily fair, saying Nigeria, but it feels like for most of the stuff that I'm seeing, they are the more vocal country. That's talking about this issue. They have 196 million <laughs> in their country. <laughs> so, so what, 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 what do you guys feel like the Nigerian response should be to this? Then? Um, is, is it diplomatic? Is it what you do to us, we do to you? Or what do you guys No, 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 no. Definitely not that. Um, I do generally think that they should have a conversation with the South African government. Do you feel like this conversation has not been had? This started in 2008. And we are in 2019, it's almost like 11 years now. And these attacks are going on, so it's like... I, I, mean, I mean, the current status of the Nigerian government to deal with this issue at the moment right now is they're asking Nigerian citizens in South Africa. To, to so they, they actually, I think the government actually chartered a private plane. Yeah, he's been, they've been so chartering they, they planes to get back from South Africa to Nigeria. So I don't know what this is about the conversations. That what is this like that Nigeria must go? Mm -hmm. NSA. Oh, thank you for that. To be honest with you. But um, I think I agree with you more to an extent. I think you you have to be very careful when you have this conversation because remember there are diplomatic relations at stake. Yeah. You know, yeah. you you cannot go in to guns blazing, stick for tight. You need to maintain that diplomatic relation, but also effectively, robustly say to the South African government, you know, how can we resolve this situation? We need to we need to ensure that. Our citizens are not being, none of our citizens will get killed again or will get murdered or get attacked again. However, just to go back to what you were saying, I was quite surprised that the Nigerian president said he's alarmed by it. Yeah, it's it's yeah, not yeah, no, yeah, no, no, I must say, I must say, I haven't actually read no, 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 the actual no, no, statement. That was what he said. But I think that's what, that's what he said. He's <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite alarmed by it. I'm so like, I think I'm not a yeah, yeah, but do, but do yeah. you guys think these attacks are carried out by a majority of South Africans or minorities? No, I think it's minority. I think it's minority. I think, I don't think, yeah. So, so, and, and, 
it's, so it's one so, of these so things where minorities from, I, I can't condemn a nation no, for the actions of no, a minority. It's, no, it's a fair point, but I think we from really a lot of the it. things that I've been watching, it's almost like they go to the poorest communities, right? Yeah. And then when you have that conversation, all of them are saying the same thing, right? Of course. But then it doesn't necessarily move it away from what the masses might actually feel. Because it's almost like the whole Brexit conversation. Yeah. Is that you might be working with people that to you, they might be going on like, yeah, everything is pally, but you don't know how they vote when they get to the ballot. Because mm-hmm. a lot of these things that are being said, they are their family, they are their friends. These people have communities in these areas as well. So mm-hmm. it's not a lot of the times that they might support that agenda. So even though it might be happening in these porous areas, it doesn't mean that other areas or people that are a bit more affluent don't believe or feel the same thing. Because especially if you talk about mass media and the use of mass media to create the narrative, mass media is not just absorbed by the minority or the working class. Mass media affects a lot of different people yeah. Yeah, because it's information. So just going back on, and, and, and I do understand, so I get what you mean to a certain extent, but I, I don't really know how that the, the variation is and the percentage of people that are really causing these attacks and how the general... South Africans feel and it's not necessarily right for this conversation to be like South Africans are xenophobic because it's just it could be just a minority yeah. that are and then they're carrying out this attack so that's not fair but in regards to Nigeria and in regards to the reaction from the Nigerian government and that statement which I found I was looking at that statement thinking that's not how you start negotiation yeah. <laughs> saying that you're alarmed but also from other things that I've been and um, looking at there was like a mass protest in Nigeria. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you're aware of the ShopRite brand. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that ShopRite brand is owned by um, South, South African or South African company um, anyway. And it's like they blocked the shop or they're trying well, to, they attack it, they were attacking the shop. So yeah. obviously Nigerians in Nigeria feel that in sense about what is going on, that they feel like they need to make their voices or they need to make their voices heard regarding the South Africans that in Nigeria so so there are a bit of that going on yeah but yeah. It's, it's such an ignorant thing to do because a the people that open those shops are Nigerians so you're depriving your fellow Nigerians of job opportunities but also it's like that's only going to incite what's going on in South Africa and actually your people mm-hmm. are the ones in danger even more because you know you, you don't have a lot of South Africans working in the shop right so you know, it's, it's like, I, I never understood what the point of that was. Did you actually ask me? It's, it's knee-jerk reaction. It, it, it's fake. That's what it is. It's, and it's, and it's, that is literally most people's reaction. That's why I have a problem with the media, okay. because it incites knee-jerk yeah. reactions. I, I, I <laughs> totally agree with that, right? But then I think I'll go back to the conversation where this has been happening since 2008, right? Yeah. And I love the whole conversation about sit around the table have a conversation right so it's a we're saying that maybe this conversation have never been had and it's only now that these political parties especially from nigeria and south africa want to have this conversation about these attacks in south africa yeah. but for me the first time if i'm a president the first time i'm hearing that my citizens have been attacking the in, in a specific country we're having that conversation yeah. so it's, it's it's either that or the conversation has been had for 10 years but there's nothing changing yeah. How long do you have that conversation for? Why, like, if if and 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 I always like relating this to your household. If you had household and you had your children mm-hmm. coming to live with me, and I keep mistreating your children, and we keep having oh, cold you like you're my brother, like what's going on here? And I'm like, oh, you know what? Yeah. How long is that dialogue going to go on for before you say that you know what? Now nah, enough is like this yeah. is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. No, so again, not that it not that it changes the narrative, but I think the attacks in twenty eighteen, sorry, two thousand and eight, was actually more towards um, people from Burundi, Democratic Republic, yeah, it was Nigeria, Nigeria and so and Somalia. So it wasn't really Nigeria. And to be honest with you, um, I don't know how that was actually resolved. So Somalia, as a person, would not attack them. You know, if you have to ask me, but um, I think I think the one that happened with the Nigerian government, I do agree with you. I think. I don't know how long... Because this is Malcolm yeah. X and Martin Luther King, isn't it? Yeah. Like, do you keep having dialogue or does it come to a point where you need to mobilise? They, they, I think, yes, I'm making well, it sound we, very dramatic, but yeah. I feel like... Sorry, sorry that I'm dramatising this. Yeah. But I do feel like those conversations need to be had. How long do you have that dialogue for? And when do you say, you know what, enough is enough? Because for the black movement and for black empowerment, both sides really helped 
to get that conversation along. Yeah. It wasn't just Martin Luther King saying, I have a dream. It was also Ma Ma Malcolm X coming in to say, e um, was it by any means necessary? By, yes, by yes, any means yeah. necessary. Yeah. Do you I'm, know what I'm, I mean? I'm so, real. The, the, the question really is, do the leaders of those nations care? Actually care, yeah. yeah. I think that is more the question. Yeah. I, I, I personally question. don't think it's something they're too bothered about in spite of other things that they have to I'll deal with yeah. in regards to these attacks in South Africa. That's what I think. No, that's Especially perfect. for it to be going on yeah. for so long. That's perfect. So the other <laughs> question that I had, though, just leading on from the Nigeria reaction, was the African Union reaction, right? Because a lot of the conversations we're having, we know it's more Africans that are being attacked, right? Yeah. So, what should be the African Union um, um, position on this? Because South Africa is one of the biggest, uh, whether you want to talk so about it, seats at the table, seats at the table, whether it's the army or GDP, whatever that you want to talk about, South Africa is there, right? So, what should be the African Union? Um, so, 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 just to answer your question, what should be the reaction of the Af African? Union. I will ask the question to everyone in this table. What is the purpose of the African Union? Don't do this. No, 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 no seriously, because their purpose should tell you what their reaction should be. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like... The, the purpose of the African Union, yeah. as, as I understand it, and it's not like I've done much research about yeah. the African Union, but it's more to protect um, the African diaspora. So anything that happens within, like just like how the EU has been set up, you yeah. protect Africans' interests, right? Mm. So sometimes it could be looked at as in protecting African in interests against Western influence or Western um, meddling in African affairs, yeah. or other times it's um, unite Africa exactly. in that yeah. sense. Keyword. So, so yeah. the conversation that I guess the question I'm asking here is that I feel like the AU should be uniting Africa. So when you have this disparity and this conversation going on where one country in Africa is carrying out attacks across uh, multiple nations in Africa, then it's like, what should the AU stance be for, for this specific um, attacks in South Africa? So, I mean, personally, I've never really taken the African Union quite seriously, because I, 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 this is my personal opinion right here. I feel they're quite, they're quite inept, they're slow to react, very slow to react, and actually when they actually decide to react, it'll be too late, and mm -hmm. actually when they actually intervene, they don't get results. You know, if you look at the um, genocide in what, Uganda, Rwanda, and was it Rwanda? Sorry, we did the Tutsi genocide. They they reacted so late, and when they did, it was like, well, yeah. Done. When you think about the stuff that, yeah. when you read about that, it's crazy. Yeah. How are people just yeah. sitting yeah. there? Yeah. That, that then goes into the next conversation of, are, are, is anyone really doing their job well? <laughs> Absolutely, no, no, I, 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 I think that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. So, so, so how, how does a cripple call another person a cripple? Yeah. Well, we're all cripples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Time for finish. Yeah. Is that what we're saying here? That's, no, no, I think that's what we're saying. Yeah. The African Union is an organization in itself that it's in disarray. You know, they don't have their house in order. Yeah. So, yeah. What, what are they supposed to do? When, would you expect when in the there? past, <laughs> when in the past, they've been very, they've been very slow to react, they've been quite lethargic, and actually, when they've actually decided to react, Nothing has happened. So, no one's looking forward to them to do anything. Yeah, no, <laughs> no one has any expectations. No one. Uh, it's this is, your question. It, it's, we don't it's, have any expectations. It's, it's, it's really sad state of affairs. Anyway. Very. And, 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 and you know what? Time is against us. I've really just gone past my... my but I feel like it was so many relevant conversations Absolutely. that we needed to have. Um, so, I'd like to wrap it up anyway. Um, so, last thoughts. Um, Chris, any last thoughts on this conversation? Yeah, so, with me, I just feel like... Um, this whole thing with xenophobia in South Africa, it's a thing where we've seen before, like most said, it's just that now we've got actual term that's coined. We've got questions that we need to raise as to why everything is getting coined and blown out like this when it comes to particularly South Africa even though we're not excusing that because at the same time a spotlight needs to be shown, like, shown on South Africa especially for the fact that it's been going on over 10 years mm. in the public that everyone clearly knows about so something needs to be done and rectified and not just for South Africa but um, places like South Africa and for the rest of South Africa just so that it doesn't happen again obviously this goes on 
I've noticed in places like Africa and Asia, it happens in Asia a lot as well. Um, obviously, we are stories. concentrating on South mm. Africa here, but it does mm. prevalently. I always read it yeah. in the Asian community or the Middle East, that area. This actually, yeah. the ethnic cleansing, everything, it happens a lot in the streets. It's actually ridiculous because half of the time, it is, it's xenophobia. It's, 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 it's literally countries between countries that's almost right next to them. Yeah. They're yeah. not too far. And it's like, wait, hold on. Who are you fighting? The people that suppress you or the people that are meant to be helping you? And like, it's like the common sense kind of thing. It's, it's more that the crabs in the, in the, in the, in the, in the barrel kind of thing now. It's more, instead of, trying to climb yeah, up, instead yeah, of helping each other, it's more like, how can we pull each other down to literally get closer to the oppressor? Because at the end of the day, once they kick out of all the immigrants or whatever, I just, you're just probably going to go and try to get closer to the oppressor anyway so it can benefit you anyway. Mm. Do you see what I mean? And that's what it looks like to me. Mm. It looks like, well, think like, that's why things like the African Union was meant to be beneficial for all Africans. And that's why, with me personally, I get the things of like, Gaddafi, what his idea, like ideology of trying to build Africa in that sense. Yeah, that, 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 yeah but that's just that that's sense. That's, yeah, yeah, that's just yeah. that sense for me. I feel like we need to learn from each other and yeah, move on past all of that. But yeah, that's me. So maybe I think maybe the term that we should be coining for African immigrants should be expats, isn't it? Because they are yes. within Africa. So <laughs> yeah. maybe we should have called them immigrants anyway. Yeah. Um, um, Dale, last uh, thoughts? I think for me to summarize on xenophobia, I think it's a shame. Talked about, I think it's key to say it's actually a worker and it's actually a shame. Um, I think xenophobia in South Africa at the moment, again, I think it, 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 it's, it's almost a manifestation of the incompetence of the political or the ruling party in South Africa. And I think it's the frustration from their incompetence that's led people to actually take out a frustration upon people who look like you but do not come from the same place you come from in terms of being migrant. Um, I feel that it's something that needs to be first. I think there needs to be some education to the people of Africa about xenophobia. But I think most importantly, I think the government needs to take ownership and say, guys, you know, whatever's happening here, it's not these people's fault, it's our fault. But politicians being politicians, that would never happen. So mm. You just hope that obviously this gets re re resolved quite quickly and there isn't any loss of life. I'll go in, I'll give you the last, um, yeah, your last thoughts to wrap it up. Um, yeah, so I agree with um, both of the uh, summarized um, comments from Chris and Dale. Um, I think maybe the only thing that I could add is um, sometimes it's, it's really difficult to see. Um, and now use the word us fighting among each other because we miss what the actual important goals are. And it's, it's, it's really a shame that these type of things are happening. But I guess as you guys have mentioned, it's happening so much in so many different countries already. Nigeria happened in Nigeria. So these things do happen where people might feel um, disenfranchised and they might feel like the problem is with um, African expats. Um, on this issue. <laughs> um, so I guess I guess what what I would like to say though is that when you're looking at the African the dynamics of the movement within Africa, we have got new leaders that have different ideologies. Like someone that comes to mind is Paul K Kagame. Um, love that guy. Uh, he, do you know what I mean? Love so him, him. the ideology and what he is saying and how he wants to move along kind of like makes sense for African to be. To be able to be self to self sustain and to be able to actually open our eyes to see what the actual issues are within within our country, and I feel like obviously a sense of responsibility regarding our actions as well is there because um, the people that are committing this these type of crimes and um, they know fully well what they're doing. And as I said, a lot of these crimes, as you mentioned, um, they could call it xenophobic attacks because of the undercurrent of issues that are going in the country. But a lot of it is for opportunism as well because yeah. of the socioeconomic factors that they face. So I guess I don't really, um, you guys have said most of it anyway, but I feel like it would be really great if we had the African Union mm -hmm. um, uniting and getting some sort of dialogue together. Because for me, 10 years is, is way, it shouldn't be 10 years. It should have been some months before 
South Africans, South African politicians are held to account by the African Union to say that, look, we know what's going on here. We know how you guys are inciting these attacks and this needs to stop somehow. However, if the biggest and baddest person within the union is South Africa, then how do you ever have that conversation? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess yeah, that's my last comment. Mo, and last thoughts? Um, you know what? I think you guys literally have summed up exactly kind of all the same um, stance where we feel on it all. Um, so I'll probably say something different and just end it off with consistency. And um, I personally will not be addressing it as xenophobia unless I'm going to do the same with all these other similar kind of titles or whatever. Mm-hmm. And for me personally, it just hurts me more when my people, our people as Africans, are given these certain type of titles, but it's not consistent with other countries outside of Africa being labelled or being, I don't know, alienated in the same way. Um, so I'll personally just continue to refer to it as violent attacks mm. in South Africa, which is what it is. Um, and I just want people to not have knee-jerk reactions to what the media or any coined titles or, or, or comments phrases. that are made or phrases. And to just think about certain comments and also just remember there's only 5% immigrants in the whole of South Africa. Do you understand? There is no way that percentage of people are crippling this whole economy. It's, it's physically impossible. And I just feel the government needs to do so much. Personally, they haven't really done much for the country since apartheid. So we're going on way before pre-2008. And until governments in Africa start acting more responsibly, you're going to get similar actions in the whole of Africa. And when you've got a president being charged with fraud yes. and money laundering <laughs> all of, yeah. and all of this, <laughs> is it any coincidence that the country is in such turn, turn yeah. 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 Thank you. I, f- I feel like this was a really well-rounded conversation. If you have been affected by any of the events in South Africa, we would love to hear from you. Or if you know anyone that has been affected by any of the events, we would love to hear from you too. If you're just listening and you're South African, you're thinking, what are these people talking about? They don't know what they're talking about. We'll also love to hear from you. Please get in contact with us. and We want to create more of an organic platform. So if you have any questions, please check our Instagram page, which is LDN Perspective. You could also reach us on Twitter, Perspective LDN. And please, you could always drop us an email at ldmperspective at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Perspectives, different views, one voice.